All right, so I wanted to take a look at the panic screen that's been added to the Linux kernel. And so after doing some digging, I realized that 6.10 added a panic screen, and then 6.12 will possibly add some QR code modifications to it. So I did some digging, I found the source, I got the kernel compiled. I wanna show you a little bit about what this looks like. So first up, I wanna start out without the new panic screen here. So you're looking at a setup with a virtual machine, I've got a shell connected here where I can run commands. And then down below, I'm connected to the console with Versh console. And then over on the right, I'm connected over VNC. You can think of VNC as basically like having a monitor plugged into the virtual machine. And so now what I wanna do here, without the panic screen set up, I'm gonna trigger a panic and I wanna show you what this looks like so you can understand why the panic screen is actually useful. All right, so over on the right here, I'm gonna elevate permissions here. And then I'm gonna trigger a system request here so I can echo out to proc and then sys request. So basically I'm gonna trigger a panic right now, a crash. So when I run this now, watch what happens down below and over on the right. Or you can see down below, I get some messages explaining that there's a panic. You can see here is panic, for example. But over on the right, I can't see any of this. And so if I didn't have the panic messages down below with the console, I wouldn't even know that something happened. I might walk by the screen for this machine and see, oh, there's a prompt to log in, everything's fine, when in fact it's actually frozen. And there is a hint here that it's frozen. You can see the cursor here inside of the console over on the right. You can see that's no longer flashing, and it was just a moment ago. So at this point in time, my system is frozen, and if all I had to go off of was the screen on the right, I wouldn't have any clue about that unless I looked really closely. So now let's do this. Now I wanna reboot this environment. All right, so I've got the machine reloaded, basically the same state it was before. However, I have a different kernel loaded this time, one that has the panic screen turned on inside of it. So now let's do this. In the upper left, let's do the exact same thing we did before. So I'm gonna write out C. So I'm gonna write out C to the system request trigger again and watch over on the right this time. There you go, you can see I get a blue screen here says kernel panic. It explains that it came from sysrq, which is what I used to trigger it over on the left here. And I get the little tux logo. So obviously if I walked by the monitor looking like this, this would actually indicate to me that there's a problem. Now, by the way, I've got the screen here set to blue for the background. You can control the background and foreground colors. You could change this, you could make it red. By default, it is black. So that's an option you can set. That's a kernel option you can configure. And then there's one more cool feature I wanna show you, and that's if I hop over to a different machine here. All right, so I've got a different VM here. This one's got a bit different configuration. For example, I'm using Spice instead of VNC. This is off to a VM that's sitting inside of my Linux server. Previously, that VM I was using was actually on my Mac using Chemio. Anyways, I've got this running on my Linux server. I've called guest VM. So I've got the console opened up here on top where I can run commands. And then in this case, I don't have the console connected down below, which is much more like you'd have in reality. You probably wouldn't have that connected and easily accessible. So let's just see what this looks like in this case. So again, I just need to elevate permissions here, write out a C2 and then sys request over on the right here. Watch what happens this time. There you go. You can see I get a blue panic screen. So it looks like the same as what I had before. However, if I reboot this now then, and I select yet a new kernel, all right, so I've got the machine rebooted here. This time I don't need a new kernel. However, I need to tweak a configuration option to specify I want QR codes. So the first thing I need to do over on the left here, I'm inside of the shell inside of this guest VM. I need to elevate permissions. And then I need to echo out QR code into a setting for DRM parameters. Basically for the panic screen, tell it I want to use a QR code instead of just the text and the logo. So let's see what this looks like here. So now when I do that, now if I can trigger some sort of a panic, I could do that with echoing out C again. However, I don't want to reboot the machine. So there's actually another option that comes with the panic screen and that is a debug mode. And so if I look for echoing out a one, this time to a new location. All right, so if I echo out a one here to this file, I'll create a fake panic. You can see there you go over on the right here. There's a the little tux logo. And then I have a barcode I can read. And then I have the same text down below. And the cool thing is, if I take a snapshot of that barcode here, if I go ahead and save that then into a test directory, now if I open up this website, I can upload the image. So I'll grab that test image. It'll decode the barcode, it'll spit out a link here. 
And if I copy the results there, open up a new tab here and just paste the link that it generated, it's got a bunch of data inside of it. And you can see right here, I've got a nice panic report. I've got an explanation of what went wrong. I have kernel messages down below. I have information about the kernel that I'm using as well as the architecture. And so now I could basically take a screenshot of the panic QR code, immediately reboot the machine so I can get to work on fixing it. And while it's rebooting, I can use my phone then to look up what exactly went wrong. That's a pretty cool new feature. So essentially the barcode will encode a URL. And the reason for that is the data is then compressed into this ZL parameter here. You can see a ZL right here. So all this is the compressed data for the panic report. That's then decoded with a special website here. And then basically the text is just shown down below. And then another option would be to take all of these messages and embed them directly into the QR code. You wouldn't be able to open up a website. And because you can't compress it then without having some sort of tool to decompress it, you can't store as much information in the barcode then. So yeah, if I come back over here, note down below, I still have the text explaining what went wrong here, like test from debugfs. And in the case of the test screen, you can see the cursor is still flashing and that's because this isn't a real panic. So the system is not frozen. In fact, you can move on to testing things like I could log in here and it would clear out the screen. So essentially the QR code just wrote over the top of what was on the screen. And then because it wasn't a real panic, it didn't freeze anything. And now I could just clear the screen once I log into the machine. And so now if I wanted to, I could come back. If I want to trigger that again, there you go. There's a barcode. Or maybe I want to change to a different mode here, which can display messages. So if I put in K message instead of QR code, and now if I trigger a panic again or a fake panic, there you go. You can see I get the messages that are a lot like what you saw over here inside of the report. So just a couple different options you have in terms of showing the panic screen, which again can be very useful because in most situations you wouldn't be directly connected to some sort of text console to be able to get the debug messages or you wouldn't just leave your account logged in with access to that. And so if you're walking by a machine that's frozen, you may not even know, unless of course you have this beautiful blue screen of death, much like we've had on Windows forever now. Now, if you're curious about getting this set up, there are a series of options with DRM underscore panic. So if you take a look at the documentation for the kernel options, you'll have to get a newer release of the kernel as well. Let me pull up the terminal here so I can show you which one I'm using. All right, so I'm sitting inside of one of the Git trees that works. I found this out on kernel.org. So it's git.kernel.org, and then it's inside of this Linux-next repo. So if you clone that down, you'll have access to it. Eventually, it'll make its way into an official release if this is actually integrated as far as the QR code is concerned. You can also test out just a plain panic screen by using a 6.10 kernel, so you don't actually need a pre-release for that part. All right, so I think that's enough for now. Let me know down in the comments, what do you think about this?